Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to my June wrap up part one. Before I talk about my books, I just want to express my sympathies to all those people that have been suffering with all the prejudice that's been out there. Um, with the Black Lives Matter movement, I want you to say that I do support you all. I am totally um, want to learn more. I don't feel like I've got enough information to say too much because I'm not educated enough, but that is something I am going to work on. I'm aiming to read a lot more books by black authors. I'm aiming to um, I've met, uh, to find some like, lots of more black booktubers to subscribe to because I want to learn more. I want to educate myself more and I want to be better a better advocate for everyone. I want to, to do my best. I also want to support the LGBT plus community because I really disagreed with the stuff that JK Rowling said. It hurt me. I know people that are transgender and to me what she said was really wrong. Um, and I'm not going to be supporting her at all like in that way. I totally disagree with it. I've got friends that are LGBTQ+, and they I mean so much to me, and I'm so grateful to have them in my life. But I will be going forward. I will be educating them more. I will be reading more black books by black authors. I'll be reading more LGBTQ+, books. I want to get better educated so I can support my friends and family and friends on here and just people in general. I disagree with racism completely. It hurt, and to think about what that guy went through, it really upset me. I've tried not. I've watched the video a bit, and I, it. Oh my god, it broke. It broke me. It really did. Sorry, I don't want to get too emotional. But I've not been saying stuff because I don't feel like I'm educated enough. But by not saying anything, I'm not supporting you, supporting it as much as I should be. And I want you to get guys to know I'm with you on that. I want to be a better advocate. I want to be more in tune and better qualified to say things. Anyway, I don't feel like I've got enough right to say anymore, but I hope that expresses why I've, been, why I've not said anything yet. And I hope you guys still support me. I, I really, if please re uh, recommend channels to read, rec please feel free to put in the comments, recommend channels to subscribe to that, that again, like books that are similar to me, books to read to get more educated. I would love to learn more and I am trying my hardest to learn more. But that's enough now. I want to get on with it. I want to say what I, I want to talk about the books that I've read this, so far this month and what books I've yet to read. So I will start off with the books, with the star ratings, and I'll tell you what books I'm currently reading. So I've read so far this month, I've read a total of 11 books, one of which I finished last night. So I did cut it a bit fine, but I've been so lucky. I've read a few five, really good five stars quite a few four stars and only two of the lowest star ratings. Last, as always, I start off with the lowest. One that I cannot wait to get rid of is this one, Sophie's World by Justine Gardner. I was buddy reading this with Charlie up until about halfway through and no offence, but I hated it. It's translated fiction, it's philosophy and oh my God, it's two stars, but at the best it was two stars. Because it was on some of the, my bookish posters, I wanted to read it, I wanted to, and you know me, I don't DNF books very often, but this was a blooming effort to read, and I did not like it. There was, some, I got confused, I didn't understand it. There were some bits where it talks about characters in fairy tales, books, characters, which obviously I love. It wasn't done right, it wasn't good fun. I'm not, I'm so badly getting rid of this. I did not like it at all, and Charlie did DNF it, and I should have done it myself would have given me more time to read and another body read that didn't go the way we wanted it to was paper towns by john green this is my fourth john green book that i've read and my second one i didn't really enjoy i rated it sorry three stars but it was borderline two and a half and i pushed it it is a ya book which probably is why i also rated it lowly because to me obviously at the age of 41 I am not in that age bracket by no means, and I found quite a bit of it crude, couldn't relate to it, really struggled with it. Quentin Jacobson spent his lifetime lo loving the magnificent and adventurous Margot Ross Spielman from afar. So when she opens a bedroom window late at night and summons him to join her on an ingenious campaign of revenge, he follows. The next day she goes missing. This is about him finding her. There are certain bits of this book that I thought were quite good, but not enough of it to make me want to read this. This is the second book of John Green's that I have not liked. I liked Fortune and Our Stars. I absolutely loved the other book and I cannot remember what it is, but I've loved another one of her books and, and 
I'm not going to carry on looking for John Green in charity shops. So this is another one that's going, bye bye. Oh, Turtles All the Way Down, that was the book I absolutely loved. And that was one of my top books for the last year. But now I can already go into the books that I really enjoyed. And want, I'm starting off with one that I didn't realise it was going to be one of the big books in Jane Austen in July. So I've already read it. I should have waited for Jane Austen in July, but I didn't. And it's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This has got to go down as one of my favourite Jane Austens. Yes, it's four stars, but to me it takes a lot for a classic to be five. But it was really, really good. This is about the Bennett family. And we start off with Mrs Bennett. And she has only one aim, and that's to find good match for each of her five daughters. In this, she's mocked by witty cynicism of her idolent husband. Now, I read things in the wrong order. I read the other Bennett sister first, which Charlie thought it was absolutely hilarious. My sister thought it was so funny that I read that before I read this. And that was why some bits of it were complicated because I definitely see that Mary, the sister in the other Bennett sisters, is definitely not spoken about very much in this and she's definitely cast as the geeky one. So, see, so seeing that really put it into perspective. But this is about Lizzie Burst Bennett and I think that was really lo lovely. I love this. I love the fact they, they talk about the, the sort of spoilt, rich, spoilt younger sister Lydia Bennett and I really enjoy this book. If you've not read it, by read a Jane Austen book, I would actually start off with this because it's that good. It's a really good, really easy to read, really funny. If you like books on sisters as well, it's brilliant. It's one I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend. Um, if you want to start with Jane Austen, I would definitely probably start with this. No question. It's brilliant and it will be getting kept. So that's going on my keeping pile. Now, the one I finished last night was Anne of Ingleside. It is not probably, again, one of my best ones. It's a four star book in the series and this is really about Anne when she is she has five children that started this she's pregnant with her sixth one and this is more about the children I love the children she's got some really amazing children that are amazing characters in this it is a good book it is cozy I flew through it and I really did enjoy it but I don't like it as much as I loved the one before it so and House of Dreams so that was a bit sad but I really enjoyed it I'm definitely carrying on with the series I've got I've managed to buy the next one for July need to find June's one and the one after that but I'm getting there I did enjoy this and I love Anne's character Anne is such a warm lovely lady and it's a thoroughly enjoyable book to read so that's my one to go in the cutie pile now this one has challenged me the next book I'm going to show you about and it's gone down I'm so sorry Victoria I read it for her read along I will give you some advance notice I won't be reading the next um Margaret Outward book in July because I I found it so hard hitting and right now my mental health is not strong enough to read this and I've pushed myself to read this book. Now I read it last year with Linda from Linda's World of Books. I got through it, it was five stars. This time I read it, it was four because yes, it was very hard hitting but there were certain bits that were very graphic and I found challenging to read. I still enjoyed this book. Definitely support Victoria from what Victoria read but it was a lot hard hitting. If you want to know more, please look at my Goodreads review from the last time, not necessarily this time because it was quite challenging. And sorry guys, I'm not doing as many book reviews on Goodreads because my time is taken up with my little girl that's down there that she'll be in at the end. But yeah, I think, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it now. I think it's going to be time to give it away. I've read it twice and I don't think I'm going to keep it. Now the next one is one of my sister books I borrowed off of my, that I bought. Again, the one I think I am going to keep this one. This is The Ch Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. Another four star rating. But it lost the star because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be about finding out what happened to this dog. But it's more than that. It's a lot, lot more than that. It is an autistic boy, Christopher Boone. He's 515, that's Ashberg, sorry. And he knows a great deal about maths and very little about the human beings. He loves lists, patterns and truth. He hates the colours yellow, brown and being touched. And he's never gone further than the end of his road on his own. When he finds a dog murdered... It sets off on a terrifying journey which will turn his whole world upside down. This has a bit of thriller, a bit of mystery, but it's more about a boy who needs to find the truth. And he finds he has a lot of other truths, not just about the dog in the night time, that he has to discover. Not sure whether I'm going to keep this one. It was good. I bought it for my birthday this year when I went on my last big birthday haul. But it's more not really about the dog. It's about more about him finding other truths, finding things and working his way out in the world. He has Ashbergs and I think it is a good representation of that, although I'm not qualified to say. In my opinion it's quite a good representation. It is a good book. I really did enjoy it, but it only got four stars. I think 
own you, but I did like it. I'm still not sure. Now the next one, like I said, I'm trying to be more educated. This is Limney Tisse. His his story. My my name is Why. Yes, it's four stars, but Limey pushing it. He nearly is a five because it's that good. It is about his story. Now he was put into into the foster care system. This is set sort of in the 70s to 80s time, and he gets moved around from houses. He has a really hard time. There is some bits in this book that made me cry. I flew through it because it is so well written and I think I really would support this guy. It's about his journey. It's about him trying to find himself and the things he went through. He was British and East Open. He learned that his mother had been pleading for a safe return but it took since birth. So his mum wanted him but the gov but they wouldn't let him. And at the time it was so... He was a, a black guy bringing brought up in a white family and he had it really hard. Now... Uh, we used to foster and child and child and look after children as a family and we we did our best but this is really hard because he never got really told about his mum his birth family and he never got understood about it and i think that and the racism in this is so heartbreaking and it oh my goodness it really struck a note on me how what these guys went what he, what he went through and what people went through being back in a white family and the judgments and the prejudices and the racism and right now it probably even more struck a, struck a chord but it's well written it's a brilliant book and if you would like to pick up an autobiography by someone in that area please pick this book up it is brilliant it's one that charlie's lent to me and i will be giving it back to her but i'm glad i read it and i really want to learn more and yeah it's a brilliant picture and i, I totally support it so definitely a book read this book guys now we go into our five stars I'll start off with a five star book from one of our own. Charlie from Charles He's Great. It's the third book in the series. He's currently writing the fourth one and it's brilliant. He said it's more of a, when I spoke to him about it, he said it's more of a sentimental book and it really is. Doris and Harold are on a cruise in this book and they meet another adversary. They have more battles. The lovely grandson comes into it, which I love. I love Theo. I love the way he's written. He's a funny character. I love Harold and Doris's characters in this. I love the writing. It's a smiley book. Yes, it's a bit more emotional. Yes, there are bits where I gulped and I wanted to cry, but it's brilliant. If you've not read this series, pick it up. It's perfect. And right now, I want to support one of our own authors and I want to support books that will make you smile. And please pick this up. Apparently, Charlie said that not many people have given this book enough credit. I think it deserves a lot. It's five stars. It's brilliant. It I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And there's so many good characters in this. So please pick it up. Obviously, that's definitely going on with Kitty Pyre. Now, one that you guys know would be five stars. Um, I Actually, I'm going to change my mind. have got another five star rating, but it's one from an author that I'm not talking about. So as you can well tell, that's going to go there. But yeah, Harry Potter book. But I, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but that's, I'm going to put that down. So that one, that's done. And now I'm going to go to my two favourite five star books of the month and my joint favourite books of the month. First one is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Oh my God, it was perfect for this time. A book that has made me smile more than I ever thought possible. A book that made me cry. A book that is one of the best chiclets that's ever. It's going down as one of my favourites of the year so far. Their friends think they're crazy, but this is the perfect solution. Leon occupies the one bed flat while Chippy's at work in the day. And she has the run of the place the rest of the time, but with an obsessive boy, ex-boyfriends, wrongly imprisoned brothers, and of course the fact they haven't actually met yet, this, this flat share seems more complicated than it's expected. This is brilliant. It is one of, it's an amazing book. I loved it. I'm so glad I read it. I'm lending it to my sister Charlie so that she can read it. It is freaking fantastic, and I'm so glad I got this. It is absolutely amazing. If you want chick lip, if you want fun, if you want a bit of feist, there's some fighting in it. There's some misrepresentation there's people that cross wires but it's brilliant it's about things N the way they write notes to each other it's just oh my god it's so sweet and so lovely and i oh, can't wait to read the switch next but yeah that's going on i give back to charlie pile now another book that was completely the opposite to flat share but still absolutely amazing the 13th tale by and Setterfield. you guys know this is in my booktuber recommends video i absolutely love this Tom loved it, Julie loved it, Katie from Books and Things loved it, so many people have loved this book and I now know why, I absolutely loved it, it is again going on my top books of the year, sneak preview I will be doing the um, mid-year book freak out tag in July, 
I'm tempted to, to do a topics of the year video separately what do you guys think let me know this is amazing this is historical fiction this is mystery I'm still not quite sure what genre but let's go historical fiction or mystery Angel Field House stands abandoned and forgotten it was once the imposing home of the March family fascinating manipulative Isabel Charlie her brutal and dangerous brother and the wild untamed twins Emmeline and Adeline Anglefield House conceals a chilling secret whose impact still resonates. This is, to me, it's quite scary at points, which I didn't expect. I didn't expect the scary bit. Now that Margaret Lear is investigating Angelfield's past and the mystery of the March family starts to unravel. But with the, what is the house hiding and what is its connection with the enigmatic author Vida Winter? Oh my God, there are bits that I was petrified in this book. There are bits that I cried. There were amazing bits. This is a keepy 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 book one of the top books of the year if you like historical fiction but if you like mystery if you like thriller side of it please pick this up there's some ghouly bits some ghosty bits some scary bits some emotional bits the way they link the two timelines from the past and the present is amazing it is absolutely brilliant so please guys pick this up now lastly i will now tell you the books that i'm currently reading and show you them so oh Firstly, I am reading my, I'm listening to it on audio book, I'm listening to The Confession by Jesse Burton. Don't quite know what genre I'm going to put that down in, but I've nearly finished it and I'm absolutely blooming loving it. Charlie, my sister, told me to get it on for the BorrowBox app and I am thoroughly loving it. It's perfect and I would so badly recommend that you all read it. One, I've nearly finished and by the time this has gone up, you would have seen the review of it, which is The Woolworth Girls by Elaine Everest. It's a series I've now got all the books for. It's wartime historical fiction. It's cosy, it's comforting, but it's at the same breath. It's heartbreaking because of the things that happened in the war and that side of it, but it's brilliant. The Wool Woolworths, from back when we were younger, was one of my favourite shops. It had the best pick and mix ever. I was gutted when, they, when the company closed and they went into liquidation. So to hear about the history of it, to hear about the Woolworths back in its day, in the wartime time, was amazing and I thoroughly, thoroughly love this book. I'm thoroughly, I'm not sure whether it's going to be four or five, but by the time it comes out, you'll, you guys would have known. You'll know before I do. One, I started on a group buddy read with yesterday, which is I Capture the Castle with by Dodie Smith. This is historical fiction and classic. Again, I'm not sure, I think it's going to be classics. I've got classics now, so I think I will read. And, uh, and it's about Cassandra Mortimer, Mortimane lives in a with a bohemian and impoverished family in the crumbling castle in the middle of nowhere. She records her life with her beautiful poor sister Rose, a fading glamorous stepmother Topaz and her little brother Thomas, an eccentric novelist father who is suffering from a financially crippling writer's block. I only started this yesterday, but I'm already enjoying it, loving reading it with a, with a group of people, and it's brilliant, the one I'm glad to have read. When I'm again, by the time this goes up, this I would have finished this book. It is the second in the this series, The Court of Mist and Fury. I'm buddy reading with this with Linda. Five stars all the way. Definitely better than the, than the Court of Souls and Roses. And a lot of people said the second book is better. And oh my goodness. But be warned, guys. It's so smutty and rude. There's so many sexual graphic content. Oh my God. I was like... But how is it YA with all these sexual graphical content in this? Please tell me, guys, because I don't understand that. Makes no blooming sense. But this is thoroughly brilliant, and I absolutely am loving it. It's so, so good. Loving bloody reading with Linda. But And thank you, Julie, from Hungry Bookworm, for giving it to me. It's so brilliant. So I love that. I'm starting a buddy read today with The Red Queen with Simone, for me, Simone and I. A fantasy book. A book that's nothing like what I expected, but Simone, we decided to read it this month. I think Linda's read it, and she recommended it. Definitely want to read, re definitely can't wait. It'll probably be the first one I read today. Once I've done my homeschooling and all the other fun jobs. But that's the one I'll be starting. And then lastly, the book that I'll be starting at night time is The Second Form of Mallory Towers. Mia, you can come in now. She is now, she is currently reading the first book herself. And so I decided I would read the second one tonight so that I can lend it to her. And she can come in and she, and she can read it. Because you're loving it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So, Mallory Towers series. Classics, children's classics from when we grow up. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Yeah, it's really good. I like the texture of it. Oh, she does. And it's also brilliant because it's on TV at the moment, so we're kind of enjoying it when I get a chance. But any way, guys, I hope you're enjoying your month so far. I hope you have found some really great favourite books. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe. Ring on my ding a ling, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.